On this episode of NSFW Show, we discuss a day that will live, 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 live in infamy. For me, for me, for me. We give you all the details. Also, release date information on Night Attack Live, our brand new album. I love Chinese, do you? It's all coming up on NSFW Show. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 201, recorded on October 22nd, 2013. Wayne Newton's Yacht. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 1 million high-quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 25% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code NSFW1013. And ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to ProXPN.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. And Ting! Ting is a mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay for what you use, doesn't require a contract, and offers unlimited devices on one pooled plan. To save $25 off your first Ting device, visit nsfw.ting.com. That's nsfw. Dot ting dot com. Ira, you're in the air. Uh, hey, how you doing, Nikki? Listen, uh, this is Ira Sackman. Uh, I work down the hall here at Legal. We've been getting a lot of calls about the very litigious nature of these impersonators calling in. Uh, the, the sheer volume of these impersonators and their litigious nature is very worrisome down here. If, if you could just ask your callers to uh, just tone it down a little bit or just continue to pretend I'm not here. Uh, yeah, either one, we'd appreciate that. Again, Keith, uh, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. No more impersonators. <laughs> That's right. It's go time. Ira. For NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets. The show that's nominally safe for work. Hello, beautiful party people. I'm Brian Brushwood at Twits Austin Auxiliary Location. Of course, joining me live and in person here in studio, Bonnie Brushwood. Hi. Hi. And uh, Bonnie got upset that I didn't introduce her last time, so I'm saying that. And, uh, and of course, back at Petaluma, the heart of the internet, right there at Twitch Central, is none other than my BFF, Mr. Just Robert Young. What is going on, Professor J.R.Y.? Brian, I would like to welcome everybody far and wide in America, all countries abroad, and all ships at sea to not only a fun 201st edition of the NSFW show, but also... One in which I believe, Brian, we can make the confident claim that this show has the greatest listener to logo tattoo ratio across the internet. Oh my God, dude, you're just jumping straight in with that. Dude, there's a... There's a, a, a an epidemic about, and I don't think Bonnie has even seen. I don't some even of know these. what you're talking about. Bonnie, okay, uh, chat room, give me the links here because we have uh, just this last in the last 48 hours, two new members of chat realm have revealed their Diamond Club tattoos. Oh. And now, now, and, and this is like three in the last month. And I think we we previously sure. seen one, maybe two people who have the Diamond logo, right? This time, yep. not only uh, Dave and Parker, Dave Parker, the last minute superhero of Valley Spagnola fame, uh, after all of his experience throughout America that also involved uh, some of our Dragon Con uh, hilariousness, got a diamond on his arm. Another Aussie, huge in Australia, Brian, me and you, gets Dude. a diamond oh. on his neck. That's Ev Lloyd, I believe, in the chat room. And then today, you tweet out, Yet another uh, one, and this one isn't even the diamond. No, no, okay, and this is like second level stuff. First of all, I got those pictures called up. First of all, the the original. You said it was Tom Z. Is that who it was? was no, the no, first no, to no. Grab, uh... Oh, no, Tom Z. Yes, I, I believe it's Tom Z or uh, the H. 
Oh no 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 wait I can't I can't remember if it's the H or Tom Z band I feel like a terrible a terrible host but first of all that's a big ass tattoo right there on the middle of the forearm for the and whole for the, world for the to audio see. listeners that is the the straight diamond that was the one from our first shirt that we did here actually I'm wearing the right? shirt here and now. It, and it is the H people are verifying oh, that it's yeah. the H right? yeah and so it's it's the classic Diamond Club logo then boom this weekend and first of all the out the arm. That's that's the end of the sleeve, man. That's where the whole world can see it. Then boom! Wait, wait, wait! There we go! Boom! Oh. Right there on the neck, Ev Lloyd has the Diamond Club uh, spray paint one, which is great because it's reminiscent both of the T-shirts that we had at Dragon Con and of the actual vandalism committed on that on behalf <laughs> of the Diamond Club that sits uh, looming over the Twit Studios at that uh, that rock venue. And then today. Just out of nowhere, freaking Crunchy89 on Twitter, uh, who, by the way, we were very worried about was in a bad car accident. Get this. She's got this, this, this gnarly, awesome scar on her thigh, covers it up with a Ruinum tattoo. Oh, no, wait, that's perfect. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, again, she was another one that, that came out, uh, for the big Dragon Con extravaganza. She was so, uh, it was so awesome to see her, especially after, uh, heard that she had such a harrowing experience with the, uh, with the auto accident. And now a big Rotom tattoo. Like I, I, there's, there's obviously Brian, we've, we've been happy enough to have the opportunity to do so much stuff with this, but the tattoo stuff. I don't know what it is, man, but that that gets to me. Like that's 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 something that, that sticks with me. Well, and I'll tell you what, and 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 yeah, th this this won't be very funny, unfortunately, but it's like it it speaks to me. That's the kind of crap you do for family, man. That's like next level stuff. That's that that to me speaks about the the deep relationship with the folks who who have written all the funniest stuff in the show, as you and I have freely, you know, admitted. Here's my question to you, though. Like, would you get would you get a, a Diamond Club tattoo? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just like likely that, huh? not. Right. I mean, I I I don't know uh, if if I were to get. Let me put it this way: I have never wanted to get a tattoo because I've never wanted. I've never had any idea in my head that I would want to be permanent. Right. I, I right, was always right. thought that as, as cool as I think stuff would be in my head, at some point, I'm going to be like, why is this on me? This is disgusting, right? Well, the closest to me, to I me, could ever example, come mentally to thinking about a tattoo would be a Diamond Club logo. I, I will say that. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. is like I always regarded tattoos as being like, uh, like I've had a number of different posters on my bedroom walls over the years, and none has lasted more than seven years. And if I still had my Red Hot Chili Peppers poster up from high school, I'd be all like, man, that's really got to come down. Oh, wait, it can't. It's permanently attached. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's like at this point, no matter what else happens, the fact is like this is this is a half decade of our lives that has been ruled by this Diamond Club uh, chat realm experience. And it's like now we're at the point where I, I kind of wouldn't mind having a permanent mark of, of that time, because even if I, whatever else happens, right? So NSFW, we finally get fired, Justin. It finally happened. Uh, and it goes away. Like, I'm still going to recognize that entire chunk of my life that belongs to this group of people. I, I don't know. I think I well, could. Well, let me, let me ask, let me, let me turn the conversation over to Bonnie, because uh, as you mentioned, in the soon-to-be-released <laughs> Night Attack Live, <laughs> available yeah, let's, let's next week. Let's turn our attention to Bonnie's side crotch. <laughs> yes. Well, no, no. Well, you, you know. Brian tells a story uh, about his bachelor party that involves your ban on him getting a tattoo. Would you be okay with him getting a tattoo now of the Diamond Club? And keep in mind, you would be saving me from getting a tattoo of my own stupid logo. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't know. I guess I have mellow because I, I don't, I, I forbid, forbid you from getting one. Well, you did on my bachelor party night. Oh. That was in the explicitly denied category. Oh, well, I've it never, was probably never, a pretty safe thing. I didn't know what you would come <laughs> home with. So <laughs> I think that was probably a pretty good idea. I didn't. I. I don't think I've ever proposed getting a tattoo, and I. Th I think you'd be cool with it if I wanted to. And all of this is theoretical. I feel like I'm. You know what? I think I knew that was on the docket, and I think I was trying to head you off from from coming home. Like really? Yeah. With like a face so. tattoo. Huh. 
Yeah. Of like- Wild eye as Akhtar has appeared next to me uh, <laughs> for no apparent reason. For the uh-huh. audio listeners, just know that I can smell the 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 aura that is Ayaz over my right hand shoulder. Ayaz asked me to take video of my hundred mile bike ride, and uh, I it was really weird doing like blog posts and vlogging to myself from my iPhone mounted on my uh, my bicycle as I was pedaling. But uh, but I thought of Ayaz the entire time I was on that bike ride. So thanks, Ayaz. Thank you, you. can talk. <laughs> right. Is that because of the blisters on your bum? Or <laughs> yeah, my butt blisters. Jesus, is that what made you think of Ayaz? I never, I never asked you to check and see if they were actual blisters. <laughs> I think I just got butt rash from that ride. Okay. But like, there was a brief moment when showering, and I'm like, oh yeah, my knee's pretty trashed. And then I get in the shower and I'm cleaning all the bits, and I'm like, oh crap, do I have blisters around my bum? Aww. And all right, you hold never on, whoa, whoa, whoa. I never I, asked. I, yeah, but- <laughs> Hold on for one second, because again, nobody in the audience, unless they follow your Twitter feed, knows, oh, knows what the hell on. you're even talking about. Maybe it's so better that way, bro. So if you're going to talk about butt blisters, at least set it up for the ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, so uh, my my uh, my my best friend from college, my college roommate Brady Hurst, uh, decided that you know he, we challenged each other to go on a hundred mile bike ride. We made the we sketched out a route and we picked a day and we decided we're going to do it. Uh, the, strangely enough, the day we picked for our calendar happened to be the day before the Livestrong Foundation's 100-mile bike ride, but we didn't know that. So like two assholes, we decided to go on our own route in the opposite direction from Livestrong the day before their ride. And we uh, we went all the way out. Uh, I mean, it was 100 miles. We went all the way to you know Blanco and then out west in Johnson City. And, and during this time, we made some colossal mistakes. We ran into like hills that were clearly not meant for bicycles that we had to carry our bikes all the way up and then try to ride down. And then we had to, we had to, we had to carry our bikes across streams and all this crap. It was like, it was like being 12 years old and just riding slightly outside of the neighborhood again. It was really pretty rad. But the thing is when you ride for a hundred miles, uh, your, your, your butt gets sore and you get, you get the butt blisters. <laughs> okay. So is it good? <laughs> Was it a fun time? The butt blisters? They're great. Well, I mean, no, I don't know. I, the, exper- the, the experience, the, dude, the experience was amazing. It was it was terrifying and shocking because, like, part of the nature of trying to go out in the middle of nowhere is that you're in the place where there's no cell signal. Like, I, it's amazing to me. Those experiences we had when we were kids where you were constantly out of earshot, uh, when you were out of contact from, from your parents or whatever, like, how rarely do we experience those as adults? And, like, to get to have have that happen in real life was amazing. And, and to be terrified of like getting a flat out in the middle of nowhere. And you know, it was, it was, it was awesome. I wouldn't trade it for the world. What if you had to, it was the world for that experience. And so, and otherwise uh, the world would be destroyed. Trade it, trade it in a second. I could always go on another <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I mean, is that, is we would be really pissed if you didn't trade it. You could always go on another hundred mile bike ride, Brian. You could have had the world. You'd sir. be extraordinarily right. selfish. We're going to tell you about a major tragedy that has befallen an American icon. Uh, but first, Brian, we got to pay some bills, and those bills are paid for you, the NSFW show listener, by Shutterstock. Over one million high quality video clips, as well as, I mean, just an ever expanding number of high quality pictures, HD, or you can save money by downloading them in standard definition and web formats. Brian, yeah, I'm mean, gonna just. What could you use an infinite library? Not quite infinite, but basically infinite uh, of pictures and videos for. Go. I'll tell you what. I, I if I was gonna make a documentary about my hundred mile bike ride, I'd be like in a world, and it's like you know, uh, cut to. Of a stock photo of like a highway, a lonesome highway in the middle where a middle-aged man and then cut to like a fat dude sitting there playing video games and you're like, rides a bike for a really long time and then just show like, you know, some kind of crude Photoshop of a dude on a Harley. And you're like, then cl- truly his butt will have blisters. The Brian Brushwood story. Anyway, butt blisters. you can find all Brushwood the pictures story. and videos that you need to make that particular trailer at Shutterstock. Dot com. And not only that, but you have flexible pricing. Download individual clips or video packs. Everything you need 
I mean, like, you want to make a website? You want to make a short video? Tom Merritt made a trailer for his book, La Beta, based on Shutterstock clips. That's the kind of stuff that you can do. Now it's possible. Didn't think it was possible. Now it's possible. <laughs> your brain just exploded all over your computer. Here's what we're going to do. No credit card needed. Just start an account. Begin using Shutterstock to help imagine what your next project could look like. And save your video selections to a clip box. Take a look at them later. Just let other people look at them. They got collaborative tools that will really make your project uh, the, the, the beauty, the absolute amazing experience that it really can be. Once you decide to purchase, use offer code NSFW1013. Again, that is NSFW1013. New accounts receive 20% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com. 25% off new accounts. Use offer code NSFW1013. We would like to thank Shutterstock for making NSFW show an actual possibility in your life. Yeah, man. Uh, oh, by the way, you just saw a, a preview image. There it is. Butt Bliston, the Brian Brushwood story. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is this? Bonnie just handed me something, and you'll have to explain this, Bonnie. Well, like, because I, she... I just in, I just turned the beam. Okay, because what I'm looking at, she, Bonnie very proudly is like during the during your read, she's like, I need I need this I need this, and I hand her the thing, and she. <laughs> <laughs> So the bees, for everybody sure. listening, the bees <laughs> in, like in Brian lines. Brushwood uh, are turned sideways in butt blisters. So they look as if they were dangling cheeks. But yeah. what's, funny, what's funny is I looked at this and I'm like, what, Whistlers? What? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, it was... It was just a crude sketch. Look, uh, Justin, I feel like I feel like you're ready to give a, a patented Justin Robert Young manifesto to some people, and I think it has to do with the Chinese. You want to talk about the Chinese? I do, but first, I want to talk about a terrible tragedy. Oh no, this mm. is this is a legitimately terrible tragedy. We were reduced <laughs> to tears when we heard this this afternoon, Brian, as we were trying. <laughs> One of these days, <laughs> all right. You're, you're I'm going to be long you're since now. moved on. Probably arrested in a Czechoslovakian prison. You will be a happy grandfather as as your daughters have children of their own. And we will all yeah. remember where we were today, <laughs> October 22nd. <laughs> the day we found out that Wayne Newton's yacht has sunk. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to need just a moment here. Wayne Newton's yacht. Yes. I think meant the same thing to all of us. It was an icon of what might be. Uh, this uh, People are asking if the yacht was in Nevada. I assume it was on the ocean. It was somewhere. in Lake Do we Mead. Have Lake Mead in Nevada. <laughs> it was in Nevada, okay. Brian, <laughs> I'll never forget how blue the sky was. <laughs> that morning I went to work like any other day. Not knowing that my world would be shattered. Lo, the world around us changed forever when Wade Newton's yacht was sunk. Now, and, and, uh, this kind of senseless tragedy, do, do we even have a reason for it? No, Brian. Really, this is one of those black swan events where we can struggle to put together why such a horrifying tragedy would befall such a beautiful man as Wayne Newton. And the yacht yep. named Rendezvous, which once sailed around Lake Mead, allowing Wayne Newton such debaucherous hilarity, wouldn't be taken <laughs> how, from us. How do you respond to accusations like YSS man's that 1022 was an inside job? <laughs> I Listen, it's disgusting, and I think it's about time that we knocked it off. Because I've seen the, I, listen, I've seen the message board posts that if Wayne Newton's yacht actually sunk, it'll be the first time that water melted PVC coating on his yacht. <laughs> now, Sunbun is shouting right now, very upset. Wayne Newton's yacht will rise again, Pierce. Uh, I mean, do you think there's? Did any you? I mean, did you? You heard the? Back? You heard what Alex Jones was saying about it today. I mean, I, I don't even want to dignify it, but. Uh, <laughs> But, Brian, if you cut to your camera, I believe you can play a clip that doesn't have my face in it. This is from Alex mm, Jones' sure. uh, show today. 
Yes. Let me get that loaded. Well, now, I'll tell you what. Wayne Newton's yacht was never in existence. And that's what the media doesn't want you to know. Wade Newton's yacht was a figment of your imagination conceived at the Build-A-Bear Conference in 2009 <laughs> by Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, E.F. Johnson, and everybody else. It was also the Monopoly Man, the Cuddly Bear from the detergent ads, <laughs> and Wade Newton, who said, we need a way. Pierce, listen. This is all proven. We've got the proof. Build a Bear Conference, 1999. Britney Spears, 98 degrees, and Al Gore. Together said Wayne Newton's yacht is the only way that we can continue our liberal dominance. Chemtrails. Pierce. Chemtrails. And I don't even know what to say to that, Brian. Yachts can't sink in water at that temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Infowars.com. Everybody knows it. <laughs> Infowars. Infoyachts.com. <laughs> so I what heard, we want to do is pay the... tribute to Wayne Newton's sunk yacht. Yeah, keep in mind that Wayne Newton is a huge figure. 98 in degrees media. will rise again. <laughs> if, if I'm not mistaken, Nick Lachey's believe... a beautiful man. I believe Wayne Newton has almost 3,000 Twitter followers, and I think that he could really use some words of encouragement, and I mean genuine, heartfelt words of encouragement about the loss of his yacht, because I think we're all, we're all touched by this, right, Justin? Listen, I feel like if maybe everybody tweeted, yo, dog, sorry about your yacht, it would be... <laughs> the heartfelt experience that I was looking for. Oh, um, really? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what's his Twitter? It's at I'm, Wayne <laughs> underscore Newton, Newton. No, I think it's like Wayne Newton LV. It's called it's called Newts to your cooch. <laughs> 69. <laughs> Newts to your cooch? 69? <laughs> I mean, that's what I that's who I've been communicating with. Maybe it's a, a parody account. <laughs> I like to think that he just tweets the same things as drunk Willy Wonka. It's just the same nudes to your cooch. Nudes to your cooch, 69. Uh, I heard that. I heard they they found out because there was an SOS message in a ruin and bottle. Oh. I'll tell you what. And, uh, look, everybody's taking this as a way to make fun of him, and I'll be the first to say it, man. Yacht people are, <laughs> yacht girls, they got problems too. They're just like you. <laughs> but they got yachts. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, all right. For real, let's all just give heartfelt condolences. No snark to Wayne Newton. Homeboy Nothing just lost love. the yacht. Everybody's right, safe. I, I I don't think <laughs> I don't think it's Newt's to your cooch sixty nine. I, I don't know what his actual <laughs> Twitter is. Uh <laughs> wait, somebody said he lost his Captain Hat Man. I don't know what that even means. Uh, all right. Yacht people rich. Yacht people rich. <laughs> <laughs> Throw your hands up if you played in Las Vegas. Yacht people rich. Yacht people rich. Yacht people rich. Uh, all right. I want, uh, I feel like, Brian, we need to have a little uh, a tribute song to Wayne Newton's yacht. So we were trying to decide earlier whether or not it should be uh, to, oh, geez, JC Bobbitt uh, on Twitter at Wayne Newton LV. Yo, dog, sorry about your yacht, 1776. Uh I don't know if we should... All right. Everybody, let them know that you're sorry about it. Be as honest as possible. I yes. think that we need a doc created by Chat Realm with lyrics. Which way do you want to go, Brian? You want to go uh, to the tune okay, of, that... of Love Stinks with the song being yeah. Yacht Sinks? Or do you want to go... Yacht Stinks. Or Yacht Sinks, yeah. Or you would also mention possibly uh, the B-52's uh, Love, Love Shack. Shack. Yeah, yacht sinks, baby, that stinks. And then you can be like, yacht sinks, man, that really stinks. It's like if they if they make the lyrics, I, I mean, it's up to you. We could do we could do yacht sinks or yacht sinks. 
Uh, we right, let's just mentioned. decide. We got to decide for them and then let them, we point them in, in their direction. Well, People well, are saying well, love well, check. Let's just go with love check. We want lyrics. Let's open a collaborative document. Put it the link in the chat room. Everybody will create the lyrics. And whatever the lyrics are at the end of the show, me and Brian on a karaoke version will record Jeez. the uh, the Wayne Newton <laughs> yacht sinking tribute song official. <laughs> I think in this way we can really show that that we we if if not can empathize with his pain can at least uh, sympathize. Brian, in times of tragedy, we need to pull together, not pull apart. Yeah, yeah. And as we know, the best way to pull together is by shamelessly drawing attention to yourself with a song. Uh oh, are you talking about Chinese again? You're always on about the Chinese. <laughs> uh I love them. Whew. Or the or the Chinese, as you call them. I love uh, I love Chinese. I've always loved Chinese. Ch Chinese. I want to hug them all at once. That's their word. You can't. What? You can't call them the the Chinese is their word. What's our word? Uh, yeah, no. I think they took it back. No, but in, what in what is the, our word? If their word is Chinese, what can we say? The 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 Chinese. There's Chinese. Chinese? And then there's the Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, ah, yeah, man, we're all Chinese. Wait, hold on, wait, all right, here. Yeah. So I'll say it and you tell me whether or not I'm being racist. Okay, all right. Chinese. Yes. <laughs> Let me try it again. Hold on. All right, go ahead. Chinese. Yes. No, very racist. Okay. That was more racist. All right, I'll the, the I got to work on it. I, I got to work on it. Dial back the racism. Here we okay, go. go ahead. All right, dial it back, dial it back, dial it back. Now, racist, In your racist. mind, stop spelling it C-H-I-N-E-Y-S. That is the racist version of the word. You got to stop saying Chinese, and you need to start saying Chinese. Okay, here we go. Chinese. Okay, see, I, I'm hearing the Y, and it's just, it's just, it's making me feel filthy to be on this show. Okay, 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 hold on. How about this? Chinis. Uh, okay, now see that's that's the most racist because ah! you're like patronizing. You're trying to sell it like a wine. Come on, man. You, <laughs> Would you, you like? Just I got a very. Racism. I got a. I got a seventy-two bottle of Chinis. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to Actually, pull? That was. That was that was not racist to the Chinese because you were making fun of the French, and that was all right. <laughs> that was good. Well done, sir. Uh, all right, all right. Here, one more. One more, and you just rank it on a scale of one to ten. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Brian, I don't think I'm going to be able to get down to zero. Okay, so okay. I, I'm just trying right. to work my way down. I'm just going to rapid fire. You tell me where the number is, okay? All right, got it, got it, got it. Chinese. <laughs> that's that's a nine, nine. Oh, uh, okay. Hey yo, uh, Chinese. Uh, seven. You're getting better. You're yo, in the right Chinese. Direction. Uh, that's, uh, seven and a half. Chinese. Beep, boop, beep, beep, boop. <laughs> As we all know, robots are neutral, so that one is completely racism-free. Congratulations. Hey, we did it. This moment, this brief racism-free moment of the NSFW show <laughs> is, of course, brought to you by ProXPN. Man, Pro XPN is the best. <laughs> you know why? Because if I was a robot, I'd want to jack onto the internet and then I'd run around all crazy. But then they'd be seeing me. They're all like, that's Brushwood Unit 6789. And, uh, and I was like, you'd think he'd come up with a better number than that. And I'd be like, screw you. But I'd be running around. They know who I am. But I would I grab my jack with... and jack it right into the internet. And I would also want for all of my data to be completely encrypted in a 512-bit tunnel. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, man, is the fact is you should be able to run around the internet without the whole world knowing what you're up to. Pro XPN does that. They got a little green icon, a little green safe lock. That means, guess what? You got clothes on on the internet, even if you don't have clothes on in reality. That's what I love about them. They don't judge. Better than a blanket. Pro XPN. I'm sick of all these ISPs, Brian. You ever heard of these ISPs? Oh, my God. ISPs sitting on their ISPs throne. We own these pipes. We're going to tell you where you went. We're going to log it and give it to the government. Also, Let me tell you, man. you know, they got these things. Six strikes. You ever heard of these six strikes rules? Oh, yeah. Like, we're going to be real fair to you by giving you twice as many strikes as in the big leagues. We're still going to strike you out. That's what ProXPN protects you from. Better than a blanket, Brian. 
Yeah, man. Don't you? You may think you put a blanket over your head and then nobody knows what you're up to on the internet. Nope. At Pro XBM, better than a blanket. A 512 bit encryption, better than it's tunneling, better than a blanket. And listen, my grandma told me, Justin, I have an app downloaded on my Android device for Pro XPN that doesn't support OpenVPN. And I said, You're nuts, woman. Of course it supports OpenVPN. Just get the latest version. ProXPN wouldn't do you dirty like that on your Android device. They're looking out for your best interest. OpenVPN on your Android phone. That's a reality, dog. Steve Gibson gave it a great review on security. Now go to ProXPN.com slash Twit for more information and to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for the entire year. We've got a special offer. Use the code NSFW to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That's less than 5 bucks a month for the yearly plan. If you're not satisfied, you can cancel within 7 days for a full refund. Go to ProXPN.com slash Twit. Sign up with the code NSFW. We thank ProXPN for their support. Of NSFW, yeah! <laughs> Code NSFW, 20% off. Make them appreciate us. Uh, all right, look, we've already talked about the biggest tragedy in our lifetime. Now let's talk about the Chinese. Uh, or the Chinese. So, during our show last week on uh on nsfw show we uh we, we were bombarded there was a it, basically the show was all about us we were doing a little retrospective of the 200 yeah, we were in the middle before. of masturbating and people had the audacity to try to interrupt us and it was a little bit classless all right it's like look we put a sock on the door i think it was clear what was going on it was episode 200 everybody noted they wanted to come in and barge in with their current events am i right well and it wasn't even current it's one video they wanted us to talk about one video. So what? how about this? We just let's just play a bit of the video and we'll just get into it. There we go. All right, now so far I don't see anything racist about this at all. This is it's somebody a guy who's talking. Presumably speaking um, Dutch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, again, just I, I, I don't want to take issue with the way she's saying Chinese, but it's like it just sounds a little sounds a little bit the way Justin Robert Young would say Chinese. You should. It's, it, All right. Uh, well, I, I'm hearing the well, We're at the cutting end. the bit here. Everybody on the Internet said this is the worst thing on the planet. Right. Can yes. we agree with that? Yes. Yes. Some BuzzFeed. They're all wrong. Cause, and, and just for anybody, if you might have guessed by listening to it. Yes, this is the same people that made Friday. It's uh, Patrice Wilson, I believe. Uh, and he appears in a rap interlude uh, in the middle of the song, a la Friday. He has this bit where he gets people's money and he makes these music videos for them and these songs for them. They go up on the internet. And now, because of Friday, he's got a certain level of fame where people look for ridiculous songs that he does and they blow them up. However, I don't believe that this song is anywhere near as bad as Friday. And everybody who is laughing at this video is literally just there to laugh at a little girl making a vanity music video. Yes, I totally uh, could not agree more. And uh, it, 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 itself, it feeds on itself, right? And it's like, here's the difference is Patrice is not like, uh, like you, you, are, you uh, at some point said that you thought the Hot Problems girls were trolling, you know, with every successive release. Like, they, they were in, intentionally trying to get everybody all riled up. I don't think Patrice is doing that. I think he's just making songs that have poppy hooks that, that and he's doing it on a budget. Uh, and I don't think no, it deserves the response that he's getting. The, the rich parents are coming to Patrice Wilson. And I don't know this for a fact. I'm guessing that this is how it works. Rich parents are going to this guy and saying, here's money Make a song and a video for my daughter who sees 
Lady Gaga and Katy Perry and wants to be a pop star, like many little girls do, here you go, make her a video, make her feel special, and boom, that's what Friday was, that's what this is, and Friday was like legitimately absurdist. It was yes. a song about Friday, but not in what you would imagine when you think it's like, oh, the end of the work week or, or, you know, that she like, there's no story to it. It's not like she like takes a test and ace it or something like that or has homework and, and whatever. There's no story to it. It's like the most inane elements of Friday are what that song is about, which made it, for me, a legitimate piece of absurdist pop art. This has none of that. It's literally just her talking about Chinese food, which is shockingly like 90% of all other pop songs. Uh, yeah, dude. It's it's like there's nothing. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, like, and what's funny is to see the breakdowns that people like. I, I hate the smug kind of like, um, uh, I, I don't know, holier than thou attitude. Like you, uh, some kind of gawker site says we. Oh, no. You know where I saw it? I saw it like on. NBC News or Time Magazine. That's who it was. Time Magazine had a, like, we break down the Chinese food video so you don't have to watch it. And it was so snarky and so beneath time. And it was all these cheap shots. We were like, oh, black man in a panda suit. Am I right? And it's like, what is, what, what are you talking about? This is somebody who just wanted to make their kid happy. They asked the kid, what are you into? And the kid's like, I really like Chinese food. And yes, <laughs> it's a trite, cliche thing to be excited about. But guess what? All pop music is crap. And this is just somebody who's making more crap, but calling it crap. Letting it be exactly what it is. I would also bet you that she was given that song. I don't know if she actually legitimately enjoys Chinese food. In fact, I would take a wild guess oh, and say I she doesn't. I would say mm -hmm. that that he probably has a list of lyrics or whatever and says like, oh, what do you, which one do you like? I have Chinese food. I have sitting on the playground. I have shooting somebody for drug money. I have raising <laughs> money for cancer. Uh, whatever you want. Oh and she God. said, Chinese food. And there we go. You know what? That's fine. I don't care if she ordered it off the menu. That makes it all the more honest. I don't Especially know. if it came with egg rolls. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, technically, those are spring rolls, just FYI. Uh, <laughs> dude, I, I I don't understand the hate, especially because it's so late. It's as though everybody watched the Friday phenomenon and were like, oh, man, I wish I was way early on hating that. And then they saw this and there's a chance to jump on. Well, guess what, sucker? All the cool kids are loving this video. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if they're and, loving no, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it all night long. I'm gonna play. So it is that my, is that I'm what you are? Kid into it. See, I was all ready to just. I'm sorry. What? I can't hear you over my new jam. God, that's it's really hard to defend this. I was gonna say, now. Brian, I was attacking the reaction. You've taken yet another step to be the champion of the video. I you know, I just I wanna, I wanna stop. I, can I just can say, I, as a, a mother of do we, children, do we have a, do we have a safe I, word? Can I can I undo everything? No, nope, no, nope. you picked your lot. You've made your bed, brush food. Now sleep in it. Like, can can I interject something? Sure, sure. Well, you know, I have three daughters and liar, and I have a hard. Yes, I I really don't want to have any of them in a in a video with a pedo bear, and like I don't know, he just kind of shows up and it's kind of creepy. All right, hold oh, on. And all wait these. a minute. So let's say for example that, and I couldn't see this wouldn't necessarily be a Penny thing. Maybe it's a Josie thing. Josie, a couple years I, down I, well, the road. Okay, if, and I was about to say yeah, Penny, who's deeply in love with pandas. Yes. We'll Although, yeah. Although, yeah. So maybe the panda thing. <laughs> right, but, but look, he's stalking her down the thing. He's like, let's go up to the stairs. I didn't see, I didn't look, see. he's like, got candy. Well, actually, it's I, like, I, woo, I rainbow. I see versions of this with, like, dark, evil music. <laughs> Somebody needs to. <laughs> <laughs> this panda will fly away. All right. Well, let's say one of your daughters said, I want to be a pop star. And all my friends have gotten these videos. I would really like one. It's all I want for Christmas and birthdays combined. You would say no to a Patrice Wilson produced joint, dude. If Patrice, I, I just feel like the the thing that really throws it over the edge is having like a guy who's three times their age in the video with them and singing. Like, why can't it just that's all what be? That's what offends you is that he puts himself in the videos. That well, he. Like, he it, it's just like he's way too old to be in this video with the teenager. But and that's, I mean, I'm sure that really that's creepy. part of it. That like he says, all right, well, listen, you can get the $10,000 package and I'll just make the video and the song, 
right? But right. for 12,000, I'll do the rap in the middle, just like I did with Friday. Do me a favor, go ahead and check that Friday total views number. Uh, that's what you get for 2,000 extra dollars. And your daughter's like, oh my God, I want to be as big as Friday. I love the song Friday. You're going to say no? Okay, you know what? I'm going to imagine this in our world, and it'd be Perry Grip. Like, I'd be okay with Perry Grip coming on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, Just because no, Patrice no. has baggage? No, huh? no, no, no. I'm saying, look, we're talking actual Patrice Wilson. Like, like the same guy. Like, uh, like, like First Penny name wants Patrice, Patrice last guy. name Wilson. Because it's not songs that you guys like. It would be songs right. that your daughters would like. Like, you can't just be yep. like, hey, uh, yes, you get to make a music video. It's with the possum posse. Go ahead and go do it. <laughs> because you guys like that. It's not what they like. Yeah. Right. That's true. So what's the answer, girl? Oh, if I had a lot of money, I guess I'd be like, whatever's be happy. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Let me do my cocaine in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta wash my side crotch. <laughs> <laughs> and then next yeah. thing you know, Josie Brushwood and the viral hit sensation Ching Chong Bling Blong Ding Dong is spreading <laughs> all over the Reddit's wide. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. That's the thing, man. What happens to those kids who, uh, who are like, like, I mean, Rebecca Black, like, they decided to try to convert it into an actual pop sensation success. She was a uh, pop right? sensation. Yeah. I mean, like, well, there's, I mean, you know, I had a follow up hit and everything. Well, I mean, yeah, as far as in terms of a music career, you know, she had a one hit wonder and then she had whatever else she had after that. I mean, that's as legit as any other music artist. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Uh, all right. Look, uh, do, uh, so, so what's the verdict on this? Like like lay off of, of Chinese food or or just I, I, I guess it's the. I don't know. It's the end thing to do to hate on these. Videos. I don't know. I think but they're just a little there, vanity. I mean, look, I, I've got that. a VHS tape. Of me, my brother, and and another kid rapping Beastie Boys Paul Revere. And like that, that might have been in a different alternate world where there was the internet. You know, everyone making fun of that and blowing it up. We'd be like, these right. people just let people come into their booth at the mall and pretend to be pop stars. Look at them acting above their station in life. Let's all hate them. Ah. I mean, here's here's my thing. You can make fun of stuff. That's fine. You can be snarky, that's fine. Just understand, every once in a while, when you're totally crapping on something, look around to the other people who are laughing with you. And just think, do I want to be these people that are really attacking this person? Because, like, to me, a lot of the Chinese food stuff, I was with you. It rubbed me the wrong way because it was just really weird and really snarky. The song isn't as absurdist and weird as Friday is, which is, for me, what made that special. And it really was just crapping on a little girl which I don't necessarily think is the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> wow. Way to go out on a limb there, Justin. You really put yourself, <laughs> you you planted a stake in the ground and said, crap it on a little girl? I don't know. I don't think maybe that's the coolest thing this in the world. This is the same thing I'm that we Justin got into Robert the thing Young. with with that one video with the uh, sorry, I'm not sorry. This was the exact same thing. Yes, yes. Oh, you're right. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I agree. Totally when you agree. envisioned yourselves as as 10 years younger, 20 years younger. What? What are you asking? <laughs> I don't know how old. Oh, you're talking about how that how that uh, sorry I'm not sorry is essentially NSFW. Right. But, yeah. Uh true. I'm seeing in the chat room. Thank you for your courage, Jerry. You're welcome. <laughs> you're yeah. welcome. That's why I'm here. See find strength through me. I am your strength. <laughs> Don't I'll crap what, on little have, girls. Never. We have we have a straw poll up right now. Crap it on a little girl. Pick one. Cool or not cool. I'm <laughs> gonna go against the grain. I'm gonna select not cool, and I'm gonna vote. <laughs> I vote. Whoa. Oh, the split even... is 50-50. <laughs> Six sad world we live in, Brian. That. That's why a voice, a hero, will rise to let everybody know that it's not cool. We'll chase him because he can take it. He's not the voice that we deserve, but he's the one we re we need right now. Jury. Oh, my God. That don't crap on little girls' dark night or black 
Knight, as uh, they said in the Apple keynote today. <laughs> Did they say the Black Knight oh, today? The Black Knight trilogy, which you can get <laughs> on iTunes. <laughs> Turns out it's made by the guys who do Tempest Satsula. <laughs> it's a Black Knight. <laughs> by the way, not cool. Barely winning. He is going Barely through Gotham City. Cool. He will stop you. <laughs> Black Knight. <laughs> you son of a Amazing. bitch. <laughs> All right, we, we, we have another sponsor. Oh, uh, holy cripes. Of course we do. I want to make a call, Brian. Yeah, what's up? Look, J Justin, man, what's up with all these sponsors? It's almost like everybody just smells, they smell heat. They smell our, our heat as we as we burst into flames with all the people and the tattoos. They're like, they're like, tattoos? Maybe they'll get tattoos on our stuff. Let's sponsor that NSFW show. You know why? Because people buy what we suggest they buy. We want to know what For else. Example, we attract sponsors that share our personal kind of milieu, which is no BS. I don't know if you've listened to this show. There's been no BS yet. We've yet to drop a single nugget of BS, which is why Ting.com sees us and they're like, thank God we found brothers in arms. We unite. Yep. In the general cause what, for no BS. Tank, Tank is founded by people who are fed up by the BS. They originally were going to call the, I, I don't know this, but I thought they were going to be called the BS Busters. But then they decided that Ting was shorter and one syllable long. And also possibly not a copyright infringement against a certain movie property. But Ting is all about the no BS. They're like, look, man, nobody likes contracts. I don't like what, you like bondage? I mean, that's cool if you do. But imagine if that bondage was... A contract. Now, do you like it? And they're like, ew, no. And you're like, exactly. Let's found Ting.com, a whole thing based on reselling Sprint's uh, MVNO. Is that, is that how That's it's That's the pronounced? thing. They're an MVNO reseller. They're going to give you a revolutionary new way to look at your cell phone. Okay? I mean, let me run it down here. No contracts or ETFs. Truly and completely contract-free. No early termination fees or other BS. How about this? A new ETF relief program if you're pay paying an early termination fee to come to ting they got your back how about this ting will give you credit for 25 percent off your uh, early termination fee up to 75 dollars per device simply purchase your device through ting port your number submit your final bill with your etf detailed from your previous carrier or you can just go to ting.com etf for more information you don't want to find yourself in a situation where for years you are bound to one mobile carrier. Dude, I've been I've been with another mobile carrier for too long. That's why I didn't buy the iPhone 5 cuz I didn't want to renew my my indentured servitude to them. How about I'm like, this? Well, ha. No bundling or ride along services. Choose from XS or XXL service levels and a whole straight in between there for voice minutes, text messages and megabytes of all data. And they're all billed separately, so you know what you're paying for. No overage charges or penalties, no add-on charges, no mysterious line items in your bill. Unlimited devices on one plan. A powerful online control panel. Feel the power! No hold customer support. An excellent online support. Ting. Brian, can I explain to you how this works? Uh, yeah, please do, because you're describing a magical fairyland with candy for walls, and I want to live there, but I don't understand how to get there. First, you purchase your mobile device from Ting, which you receive in two to five business days. Lickety split, okay? Then yeah. you activate your device with Ting and have the option to select a new phone number or, how about this one, port an existing one. Whew. What? Yeah. My okay. current number? Current number? Still valid? Let it move on into Ting Town. Ting will break out your rates by minutes, text messages, or megabytes, bill you at the end of the month only for what you used, homeboy. No more paying for rollover minutes. Hey, here, you can keep the minutes you paid for. I'm a cell phone carrier. Don't worry about me. <laughs> you can just go ahead and keep paying all this money. No more of that, okay? All you got to do is visit Ting at nsfw.ting.com. Save money. Better manage your mobile phone usage with Ting. Check out their savings calculator. See how much you or your company can save. NSFW viewers can save 25 bucks off. Your first Ting device when you sign up. Visit nsfw.ting.com. Start saving today. Dude, 
Hoagie in the chat says, I just recently ported a number over to Ting and I can vouch for how insanely easy it is to do. And that's a direct quote from Hoagie in the chat. Ha ha ha, also, Hoagie in the, the chat. chat. Uh, do we have lyrics for our uh, our, our song yet? I, I don't even know. I'll tell you what we do have is we have an important poll where people want to know, is NSFW show BS? And the options, of course, are uh, yes, no, your mother, or vagina Paul. Any guess on on what the results are, Justin? Uh, I'm going to say it's 100% no. Uh, no, it's 90% Vagina Paul. <laughs> 77% for a Vagina Paul. A big That's, upset, uh, okay, but you want to know what? It provides a completely organic transition to a big announcement we have. Oh, my God, yes. Can, uh, can, can I reveal? Can I just whip it out in front of everyone and then rub it in their faces? Because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. Boom! Night Attack Live is submitted. By the way, we can sneak white people rich in there if we want because just uh, because John still needs my credit card to submit it. But we finalized the tracks. We finalized the cover. Yeah. Freaking no, no, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put white people rich up on iTunes. We'll, we'll put that up separately. And Night Attack Live will all just right. be the Night Attack stuff. Uh, here, it will actually all be Night Attack Live. Here's the deal. NSFWshow.com slash album. Right there, you can sign up for the email newsletter. If you did it for Night Attack 2, you don't have to do it again, but do us a favor. Go ahead and let everybody that you know uh, know that this is where they can get not only all the exclusive information on a, re on a release date, but also bonus tracks. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, Brian. <laughs> What? I don't know what you're talking about. Let me fix it. <laughs> Brian Brushwood. There. All right. I yeah. Uh, Brian at Shwood. So not there only we, we don't know what the, what the release date is because we need uh, to get confirmation from uh, from CD now or sorry CD Baby right CD Baby yep, submits yep, it yep. to iTunes. We get it uh, uploaded and everything. We'll let you know when all that details uh, when all those details are available. However, in the next 24 hours. Sign up and you will get a bonus track that isn't even on the album. It's going to exclusively yeah. go out to everybody on our mailing list. We so, also have, by the way, one of the most popular things, one of the mo most enduring legacies of Night Attack 2 was, was a whole bit that didn't even make it onto the album. It was the, the whole Captain Morgan thing. Everybody who signed up were the ones who got the Captain Morgan and were in on it from the ground floor. So now you're going to get the same experience. We have, I've been told, three exclusive promo videos to promote this album that are going to come out this Friday. So you got to sign up right now and you will get those albums or, or those, those videos first. Uh, and plus, we're going to do original content. We want to blow this thing up. It's way, way funny. Like, uh, I'll I listened tell you what, to two, it yesterday. Two beloved characters. So uh, one of... We, we recorded, basically, this is half and half. Half of it was recorded at Nerdtacular earlier this year, and half of it was recorded at DragonCon, our two big convention appearances. We did special non-NSFW performances that will that comprise this album. But there are two characters that we recorded during the Nerdtacular that aren't on the album that you guys will hear if you sign up for the mailing list. But a Miss Wind... And Daphne yep. the Gamer Girl. Yes. Yep, yep. Daphne the Gamer Girl from Game On. If you enjoyed Game On, you will need to sign up for this mailing list because you will hear what Daphne's been up to and uh, all sorts of other fun stuff. It is going to be yeah. awesome. All right, look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's uh, I, I When we were there in the moment, I was astonished that we were able to pull both of those evenings off. And mainly because both, you know me, being being from a magic background, I like to have everything prearranged. I like to have all the script, all the movements, everything figured out. I, I'm terrified by the idea of just walking out, picking up a mic and being funny. I was thrilled that we that we made it through both of the, those evenings. But by taking the best half of one evening and the best half of another evening and combining them, it is a really, really freaking awesome 80-minute uh, uh, 80 minute experience. Like I was blown away. Like I, I heard 
what I heard, I was like, man, that those dudes are funny. Is that, yeah. you know, there's no way that's us. And the reaction's great. I mean, we got such great uh, sound, so many great crowds. Uh, now, a lot of people in the chat room are like, who are there in Salt Lake City, heard us record this live, are like, I can't believe you cut Daphne. We didn't cut anything because it wasn't funny, right? Yes. We literally just cut it so it could be the most streamlined it could possibly be. And literally the only reason why we cut Daphne was because we wanted it to be available to everybody who would enjoy it the most, which is everybody who's super fans of Game On, super fans of Veronica, super fans of us. So we're going to get it out to you guys as bonus content. And that way everybody who's inside... show.com slash album. That's all you got to do. Just head on over there and do that. Yeah. So you you guys are going to get it. Uh, either Buttermus Wind or Daphne uh, will be out in the next 24 hours. Uh, again, if you were signed up for the NSFW to enjoy the garden mailing list, then you do not need to sign up again. But if you're not sure yeah, if and you in were fact, you'll or get not, an error. then sign up. If, if you already were uh, on the list, you'll get an error when you try to sign up for it. So so if you get an error, that's probably what it is. It'll say something okay duplicate now? on there. No, it's okay now. But, we, oh, great. unlike Obamacare, fixed our <laughs> website. <laughs> See, Trump bombs. Oh! In your face, Obamacare website, because we have the exact same problem that you do. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, dude, I'm telling you, man, this <laughs> was... Shots fired. This was... An amazing, amazing experience that I can't believe how it condensed so nicely. It's it's really, really fun and funny. And, I, I, and plus, also, seriously, man, that uh, that that album art. Am I right? Oh, it looks great. Uh, it was designed by the immaculate, amazing genius Brand Hughes, who also edited the album. A uh, huge shout out to, of course, uh, the outgoing. Blue Cheese John Tilton for his hard work in making this one a reality. Uh, for Rob Kreckle who did uh, Yeoman's work in our sound design for this. He, he rescued- saved, saved the album, saved the album. The album was unlistenable to before before Rob Crackle put his his sound genius all over it. Yeah, he uh, he did some amazing work. And of course, yet again, uh, uh, Brant for, for just doing amazing work. He, he worked with me really closely on uh, editing down the Nertacular stuff when that was just going to be the whole album and then went back and did a whole nother pass with both me and you uh, to get the final version. And I mean, I'll tell you, I I'm I'm really, really proud of it. And and to me, it, it kind of represents sort of another, uh, another kind of level for us just because... You know, if this is if this is a success, we'd love to do these kind of live shows in the future. You know, we we were talking about that. We were talk, talking about trying to arrange for some kind of like a nationwide tour, a series of dates. Uh, I would love to do all of that. Uh, and that's way easier. If you want us to come to your town, here let's let's break it down like this. Let's say you would like us to do shows like Nertacular and DragonCon. These are regional conferences where it makes it easy for a lot of Diamond Club people to come and view us, right? Yep. Or even you want projects like Diamond Con to happen. Buying this album gives us a tremendous amount of leeway to not only have other concert or, or other convention organizers and also potential guests for our own stuff to be like, wow, these guys do this thing. We should be getting on board for it. Uh, hey, so I'll tell you what, the, uh, uh, there are two reasons. First of all, you should sign up to get the free swag and the extra stuff, the extra bonus tracks, and be first to get the, the video tracks uh, as we release singles. But also, uh, the one thing that we've been exceptionally good at is everybody buying the stuff at the exact same time in order to freaking game the charts. And, and that's how we end up with, with, with the number one Billboard comedy album. We would love, love, love to do that again. Do you realize how huge it is to be able to say that we had two number one comedy albums in the exact same year. That's that's crazy talk. Like that that, we're in a club of like five people who've ever done that. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know if, if those exist. I don't know if people release two comedy albums in one year, to be honest with you. I don't know if anybody, if that's like a thing that happens. People in the chat room are saying, TLDR, buy things so we can do stuff, guys. Incorrect. Buy things so we can do stuff near you guys we would like to do things close to you guys also we'd like to do stuff so yes we'd <laughs> well, like to do stuff 
but we'd also like to do it closer to you. But, but here's my point, is we're submitting everything today. And uh, in fact, as soon as we're done here, I'll get my credit card to John Tilton so he could go ahead and submit everything. Uh, everything is locked in and on rails. So one week from today, even if you don't sign up, we're going to tell you the exact time that everybody's going to buy. It's going to be an awesome, awesome day attack in the middle of the night. And uh, and hopefully, who knows, man, hit number one again would be a lot of fun. Uh, well, yeah, listen, it's going to be super rad. If you don't like it, then if, if the idea of us doing this does not appeal to you, hey, man, no one's got a gun up your butt. You can do whatever you want. Don't spend the money. But if I yeah. think hopefully if you're listening to this, you might like that. We're just giving you the option, ladies and germs. Oh, and by the way, we we as we've always done, we have always priced our albums at the lowest possible price that would qualify on the actual pro, uh, on the actual charts. In this case, three dollars ninety nine cents is the lowest pri pri price, uh, essentially by law that we're allowed to charge. And uh, and dude, I'll I'll be damned if it's not way worth three dollars ninety nine cents. You, it's way good. Uh, all right, now let me also make one more announcement. Because if you are in the Bay Area, the California Bay Area, um, Brian, I don't know if, if uh, I mean, you know this about me. I, I have an inability to not get my nose in everybody else's dumb business. And yep. uh, I, the other day I was at the Hack 5 uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple uh, release Launch. party. Pineapple 3, right? And... Uh, I was talking to Dual Core, who performed there, and we got to talking yep. about how Ali Spagnola's tour has a gigantic gaping hole in it between, like, Seattle and Los Angeles that happens to overlap right around Halloween. So despite the fact that I am extraordinarily busy with, like, 17,000 other things, I got drunk and said, well, I'll throw a concert for you guys. And I have. <laughs> Halloween night. Uh, I will have information. It's going to be at the Go Game headquarters in the Mission uh, on on uh, on Halloween. It's a Thursday. Concert. Ali Spagnola. Dual core. Presumably Dale Chase. I'm almost positive Dale Chase as well. Uh, they will all be there. Ali Spagnola, full power hour. Dual core, full rap making. And Dale Chase doing... Everything amazing that Dale Chase does. Please come on by. It'll be a BYOB straight up Buckwild House Party. The jury Halloween spooktacular this Halloween. So is make it true your plans. that it's sponsored come on by uh, by Spooky Juice? Is Spooky Juice will be uh, available in plenty. It's going to be a BYOB thing. I think it legally has to be a BYOB thing. Uh, but Come on by. It'll be a very, very low door charge. And uh, you get to see awesome Diamond Club friendly acts do awesome stuff. So, uh, right on, yeah. Man. It'll be a super fun time. So, make your so uh, plans it come on So, we're calling it Jury's Gaping Hole Party. That's what we're calling it, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Is that the Chinese translation? <laughs> Ah, the Chinese. Chinese. The Chinese <laughs> translation. Beep, bop, boop, boop, boop. Uh, if uh, you're not hey in the man. Bay Area, I'm sorry. Uh, we will not be able to take it away from the Bay Area. We have to have it in the Bay Area because that's where the venue is. So, uh, Alex Spagnola, Dual Core, Dale Chase, rocking and rolling with so much soul. You can rock till you're 101 years old. Uh, Halloween night. But then gonna at be that a fun point, time. we're going to have to ask you to stop rocking. Once you're 101 years old, it's too much. Yeah, done. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the uh, movie draft minute. Here we go. Welcome to your movie draft minute for the week of October 21st, 2013. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. The movies just keep on coming and there's no time to waste. Let's go check out the rankings. Padre Robert Balassar and Justin Robert Young are tied for fifth place, still waiting for their first film. Brian Brushwood's in fourth place with Carrie bringing in $16.1 million a week and 12 Years a Slave in limited release bringing in $923,000, bringing his total to $17 million. Tom Merritt's in third place with Escape Plan bringing in $9.8 million a week, bringing his total to $27.4 million. Jeff Kanata's in second place with $52.4 million. And in first place with $175.9 million, it's Casey McKinnon. And that is your Movie Drive Minute for the week of October 21st, 2013.
Dude, uh, man. Uh, okay, first of all, let me just say, 12 Years a Slave is not in full release yet. It's in limited release. That's the one about uh, somebody made. having a cell phone, right? Yeah, no, it's about somebody who's stuck in a contract with AT&T for like 14 years, and his name's Brian Brushwood, and for the first time, he doesn't buy an iPhone because he just wants out of the AT&T ecosystem. It's yeah. really a tragedy. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, freaking Carrie took a dump. And I don't mean the pig's blood on her face. I mean the hot Carl on my face yeah. that Carrie took. And uh, I think I'm out. Just uh, like that. Well, Boom. and by the way, so it was, I, I joked on Twitter, it was hilarious to me when Gravity did so well that Captain Phillips underperformed. And I laughed so hard when Carrie completely was a ghost in terms of its returns. Now it's not so funny that Gravity's really, really still doing well and Bad Grandpa, which I kind of need to at least do $100 million, uh, <laughs> is sort of just like, uh, I don't know. Are people still going to Gravity? We all saw it, right? Come on. You don't need to keep going. Hey, Johnny Knoxville in makeup. It's going to be hilarious. Man, dude, I'll tell you what, dude, Casey, I, I, I think she's I think she's running away with this thing. I mean, I, am I wrong? Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what else everything what, what everything else does. But gravity certainly overperformed. Uh, and really, my my entire plan is like get whatever I can out of Bad Grandpa, and then just hope that Hunger Games renders all of this moot. That like uh, it does. Well, and I think it will. Million. I, mean, I, I I don't know what else she has. Hang on, let me take a look. Uh, oh, by the way, we do have we have drama because you remember Jeff Kanata bought the wolf knowing that it might get moved, and it sounds like it's moved. Is that no. right? No. Well, it is getting moved to Christmas, which keeps it oh, inside shoot. our realm. And what it moves is Jack Ryan if the, report, if the reports are true. Jack Ryan would be the one that would get bumped, which who owns Jack Ryan, Brian? It's really hard for me to remember, <laughs> man. I feel like uh, there's some uh, somebody got it. Because he thought it would be awesome to buy out all the remaining movies. But whoever that guy is, he's number one. Uh, so we would have to find out what replaces Jack Ryan. Oh, man, I'm so screwed. It's karma. It's karma. All that winning had to bite me in the ass somehow. <laughs> uh, so we will see. Can, I, can you relate with me, Justin? You know what it's like to win three times. And then you're just like, ah, so much winning. And then you're like, oh, now I'm doing really bad. Is this what irrelevancy sounds like? Is this what happens when you stop actually doing things and you just drape this, yourself this in the glories of the past <laughs> and just say, remember that other time when I wasn't sucking? Yes, exactly. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, man, what else do we have left to, to, to rock? I guess if nobody wrote lyrics to, uh, to our... To our, on, nobody, we did? nobody write lyrics. No, somebody. Nobody write lyrics. Uh, yeah, they're. Uh, I'm being told by our uh, by our, our peanut gallery here, Padre S J. That oh, there we go. Theater Monkey has posted a link. Damn it! All right, are we gonna do this live right now, or are we just? We're gonna doing gonna it attach? live. We're gonna do it live. It's it's the yacht dock. I need to. Uh, <laughs> God, look at all these. Oh, they got they got cover art for this thing. Look, here. Save Wayne's yachts. <laughs> uh that that's the uh <laughs> All right, so how are we singing this? Uh hold on. I have to pull up this link. <laughs> All right, here we go. It says here, start with a rapper intro. For example, yeah, 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 it's me, yo. PSATs. Swing it low and make it flap, which is exactly what I'm going to say. All right, hold on. Somebody repost that link so I can pull it up in the in the chat. I just pulled the <laughs> chat up here. <laughs> See, all right, now this will be the real test of the entire uh, Skype two-way system is whether or not we can actually sing a song together. Uh Oh, hold on. I have been a uh, People are saying, people are saying, I want this song to be actually to the tune of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Too bad. We can only pick one song. 
Oh, good <laughs> God. By the way, well, the big yacht, it sunk to the dark, briny deep on the big lake they call Mead. The Chinese workers all say it have made it all of the way to the strip all the way in Las Vegas. At 10 a.m. Pacific time, it took its final voyage. It fell all the way in the sun of the day to the bottom of Big Lake Mead. This parody is very hard to, and will fit and to fit the song would mean approximately 24 minutes longer. <laughs> uh, I like the, the, the first one is, is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Uh, if you see a if little see boat em. at the bottom of me, it means we're all sad that your yacht sinks. <laughs> yacht sinks, baby. <laughs> I'm it's heading down, down the Titanic, the Titanic highway, highway, looking for a nudes getaway, <laughs> all wet in the love getaway. <laughs> All right, here we go. They say page two is where uh, is <laughs> they have it in red Hop and in black. Hop in my yacht, and I'll hand you a pail, cause you better start bail. <laughs> I got me a yacht, and it seats about twenty. <laughs> what is that? Full of Cab Creek, the lake crabs, and Henny. <laughs> <laughs> I got me a yacht and it sleeps about 20, so hurry up and bring your Coast Guard money. Uh, oh, my God. I don't even know. Uh, do, all right, do can we, we get a, a... I think we need... All right, which one do you want to go with? The, well, there's only one that's complete, and it's Yacht Sinks to the tune of Love Shack by Mitzula, which all if right. you go to page two... Then let's go is, with page is, two. Um... And it's already color coded for us. We just need a, yep. uh, we need a, a, a track. We need a, a karaoke track. We, you, you want me to rock this? Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. Love Shack karaoke. Karaoke. Boom. <laughs> All right. This is the worst idea we've ever done. Here we go. All right, you ready? Yeah. Then, why are we not? There we go. <laughs> Male and female. Woo! All right. Oh, no, you missed yeah. it. You missed no, it. No, well, yeah, because you took it off there. You got you to gotta keep that well, up there. Well, but uh, wait, the lyrics or the no, song? No, the, the thing, so I know where to where to start. All right, here. Let me let me copy this over to this other place so I can uh, maybe eh, question mark. Maybe this way. There we go. Newton Dock, yacht dock. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So I've got one open on the other side. We'll back it up. Here we go right. from the top. Why not? What could go wrong here, Justin? Nothing. That's what. Listen. Nothing's worse than our Brian, show. Brian, we need to make sure that we still deliver the tribute that Wayne Newton's yacht deserves. All right. If you see a faded sign on the sign of Lake Mead that says, oh. Brian. Wait, hold on. Whoa, I was looking at the, I was looking at this, and and it wasn't. Uh... All right, here. So here, I'll back it up. We could, we could do this. Also, like your, your stuff. I almost, oh. Uh... Your stuff is way delayed, so as long as it sounds good to you, I think we're fine. I'll just ignore that that you're delayed and, and everything will be fine. Here we go. For reals. Here we go. <laughs> I'd like to send this out to Wayne Newton and his yacht. PSATs, yeah! Do you see a faded sign on the sign of Lake Mead that says... Yacht sinks. Yacht sinks, baby. Do you not hear? Are you reading the thing, Brian? There's there's backing vocals. Am I just gonna shot them? Listen. Yes. They they're saying words that don't match these words. 
It's not a good karaoke thing, man. This is just this is just the song. This is just playing the whole song. Well, then we need a better karaoke version. This is it says the words karaoke. Apparently, the only karaoke part is the dude. Because then it doesn't do anything. All right. You want to just go ahead? We just want to, you just want to throw it a cappella and we'll let chat realm put the music under it? Sure. I can imagine nothing terrible that'll come of this. This is a great idea. Let's do this. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. If you see a faded sign on the sign of Lake me that says 25 minutes till your yacht sinks. Yacht sinks, baby. I'm heading down the Vegas highway Looking for a lake getaway Headed for the yacht, baby I got me a yacht and it's as big as a whale And it'll never set sail I got me a yacht and it sleeps about 20 So hurry up and bring your Coast Guard money Wade's yacht is a little old boat where we can get together. Yacht sunk, baby. Sign says, Woo! Stay away, fools, cause yachts roll at Lake Maid. Well, it slipped way back in the middle of the lake. Just a funky old yacht and it ain't coming back. Water on the main deck. Water in the cabins, water on the bridge, water everywhere. Wayne's yacht is a little... Oh, shh. I almost Go, cursed. go. Just roll, roll. Go. All right. <clears throat> Wayne's yacht is a little boat where we can't get together. Yacht sunk, baby. Sinking and a-floating, splashing and a-drowning. Wearing a life jacket because the yacht is sinking, bitches. There's wait the, you have to say with white people and cats go to the woods to find gas. Wait, what? what? Are we not looking at the same document? Uh maybe it didn't refresh on me. Hold on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, all right, here we go. Sinking and a floating, splashing and a drowning, wearing a life jacket because the yacht is a sinking with white people and cats going into the woods to find some gas, going bareback moose riding on a boat. <laughs> This is the best parody ever. I think Wayne Newton is really going to enjoy this heartfelt tribute to his lost sea vessel. Go! <laughs> the whole yacht shimmies. Yeah, the whole yacht shimmies and everyone's going to drown. Going to drown. Going to drown. Going to drown. Everybody swimming. Everybody swimming. Folks giving up. Just in time to get drowned. <laughs> Everybody swimming, everybody swimming. Sinky little yacht, sinky little yacht. Hop in my lifeboat, it's as big as a whale and it's about to set sail. I got me a raft and it seats about 20, so hurry up and bring your Coast Guard's money, bitch. <laughs> glug, glug, glug off the shore, baby. Glug, glug, swim a little harder, baby. Glug, glug, glug off the shore, baby. Glug, glug, I can't save you. <laughs> glug, glug, glug off the shore, baby. Glug, glug, swim a little harder, sugar. Glug, glug, glug off the shore, baby. Glug, glug, I can't save you. Glug, glug off the shore, baby. Glug, glug. Off the shore! Glug, glug, glug! Off the shore, baby! Glug, glug! Yo, what? Wade's yacht sunk, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> In roots! Oh, there's an alternate take here. Okay. In, oh, here you go. <clears throat> In root, quick! You gotta say get a pail. Get a pail. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so I think that was pretty much the best thing we've ever done. 
I can imagine no world in which we'll deeply regret what we just did. Man, I'll tell you what. I wonder if anyone else has tweeted uh, Wayne Newton. I'd put that on Canadian television. I think that there's one place you and I belong. It is on Canadian cable television. Uh, so there we go. The new uh, Chat Realm Loves a Project. <laughs> For you. Uh, yeah, man. We gave, we gave him a thing. That, that just happened. It's about time. Uh, I'll tell you what. We wrap this uh, bad baby up. Oh, man. I guess uh, I guess that is, that is it, man. I feel like we learned a lot. We learned a bit about the Chinese. I'm going to start saying it that way from now on, the Chinese. I think we learned a bit about um, tattoos. Yeah. And the guy who played it's tattoo. So we did. Oh, I forgot to curse you out for leading me astray about Peter Dinklage, because all midgets look the same to both you and me. Yep. Yeah, not Peter Dinklage and N. Bruges. If anybody's following us yeah. on Twitter, that's, uh, screw me, right? That's all right. The good news is I definitely looked like an asshole on frame rate because of that, because I didn't know I didn't know that you found that out. Oh, There's yeah, that. I got I got chewed out by uh, Strickland. Yeah. Because he said, hey, I got uh, some things you should know. Not all midgets are the same. Uh, More than one midget. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, look, Night Attack Live, genuinely, genuinely funnier than anything we've done tonight. You're going to love it. Three ninety nine dollars coming up next week. We'll give you details next week. Sign up. NSFWshow.com slash album. I love you guys. Do me a favor and die in a fire. See you next Tuesday. Ahoy, Brian. You're a bottle of rum. This is not even. Not I, I was pirating way to the yacht. Oh, NSFW. <laughs>